Hello everyone and welcome back to Class Notes. In this episode I'm going to do a very very simple project. But before we begin I want to point out a few things. First, I have rearranged the screen of After Effects so you will be able to see things more easily. You do not have to rearrange your screen this way. There is no reason for you to do it. It just is simply to show information easier. The second thing I want to point out is that in After Effects there's sort of an unwritten rule which is there's more than one way to do everything. The methods that I'm about to show you are not necessarily the best way to do something. The reason I'm using this method as an example is to demonstrate some very, very basic concepts in After Effects. In future episodes, you'll be able to compare the instructions I'm giving you today with the many other options available. Now to speed things along, in this example I've already imported my files and have made a composition. Now it's time to start assembling all the elements. In my timeline, I've already placed two photographs, a balloon, which is a Photoshop file, and a JPEG of cloudy skies. The balloon's on top and is readily easy to see. However, if I were to switch the position in the timeline, change the layer order, then the balloon would vanish because the balloon is much smaller. So if I were to grab the balloon, drag it underneath the cloudy skies, the balloon would be there, but just hidden from view under the much larger photograph. So the order upon which these are placed in the timeline is critical. Bigger things at the top will hide smaller things under them. Sometimes this is a good thing to have happen, and sometimes it's a bad thing to happen, depending on what type of look and feel that you're trying to achieve. Now, to the far right-hand side of your timeline, there are two color bars. This entire area represents the amount of time you have for your composition to whatever you originally set it towards. You'll notice there's actually time indicators broken down into frames or seconds depending upon the length of your comp. The beginning of the time of your comp starts at the extreme left hand side at 0, 0 and will continue on to the very end at the very right hand side. There's also a yellow little triangle with a red line coming from it, which is the current time indicator, and often referred to as the playhead. Because we are dealing with two still photographs here, not video, no matter where we put the time indicator, you won't see any change, because the photographs will not change. But we can add animation to actually make some change happen over the timeline. Let's do that. Now I'm going to expand out the properties of my balloon layer and normally I wouldn't do this because I would just bring up what I needed but for the demonstration here I will you can see all the numbers. Now from the last tutorial I was changing all my numbers down here on the timeline. I can just as easily grab the balloon and move it around and make alterations on the actual composition visual area. So as I move my balloon around you can see that the position of course changes because as I move it over, up, down, right, left, pixel by pixel, it reflects where it is on that timeline. As soon as I let go of my mouse, the balloon stops and nothing else happens. In order to make this balloon actually move, I have to create an animation keyframes. To do this, I start by making sure that my play needle on the timeline is all the way over to the left, and then I turn on the stopwatch symbol to the immediate left of the word position. On the timeline to the right, you will see that there's a diamond shape. That diamond shape is the keyframe itself. Now, keep in mind that actually keyframes can actually come in different shape, but the diamond is the most basic one. So we won't worry about all those other unusual shapes that can be created with After Effects. That diamond shape represents how many pixels over and how many pixels down right at that moment. If I were to change the balloon's position by either moving it physically or by changing the numbers down below, the keyframe would represent those changes and we still would not have any animation. The reason is we must have at least two keyframes. That's the bare minimum. The first is the start point and the second one would be the end point. Now we'll move the play needle over some frames here and that will give us a change in time. 
Now I will physically grab the balloon and move it over as well. Notice that there's a little line coming out of the balloon as I move it. And as I move it, I also get a new diamond shape on the timeline representing the new position. The line is the motion path. This is the path which the balloon will travel. The first keyframe that we did originally is the start point. Second keyframe is the end point. Now notice at the beginning and the end of the motion path, there are two squares. One at the start, one at the end. Those represent and are tied to the keyframes down on our timeline, the diamond shapes. The ones up above represent a physical position and I can actually grab these and change the motion path. So this is a physical XY position on the composition. The diamond shapes down below represents a physical time. For example, right now the balloon will travel between the first and second square over so much time. If I grab the diamond shapes on the timeline and bring them closer together, it means that the balloon must travel the same physical distance above in a shorter time. On the other hand, if I were to stretch out the diamond shapes, the balloon would then take longer because I'm giving it more time to travel the same distance. The best way of thinking of this is the diamond keyframes control time, and the square ones up above in the visual area control the position of whatever you need have happen. You can have as many keyframes as you want. To make a new keyframe, you just move the time indicator to the moment you want something to happen, and then move your object to have the new keyframe be created. Well, if you make a mistake and have too many keyframes or don't like the one you currently have, just take your mouse click on the keyframe on your timeline and hit delete on your keyboard and it will get rid of that keyframe. Now why isn't my balloon rocking back and forth or getting bigger or smaller or fading out? Well quite simply because we didn't tell it to. The beauty of After Effects quite simply is that almost everything is keyframable. Because we only told the computer to keyframe the position, that is the only reason why it moves across the screen. In order to get it to rock in place or something like that, we would have to uh, activate, hit the stopwatch symbol for whatever we want to have happen. So let's do a quick review of how to do a simple animation. Once you have your composition made and your photographs or video or whatever on that composition, you need to decide what kind of animation you want. To have it move, you would choose, of course, position. First you would move your balloon in this case, or whatever photograph you have, to the start location. Make sure that your play needle, or your time indicator, is at the start position, at 0, 0, far left hand side. Then click the stopwatch next to position. You would then move the time indicator to a new time, and then move your object. If you want to have more animation, you would move the time indicator again, and then move the object and repeat and repeat and repeat. After a while you'll have a complete animation that you can watch. The next step of course would be to add more keyframes for different uh, transformations. So not only will you add position i.e. movement but also make it larger and smaller with scale and add rotation as well. Remember you must have a minimum of two keyframes in order to get a start and in position. So have some fun practicing with that and we'll talk to you next time.